50 years ago this past week, at the height of the Cold War, Team Canada and the Soviet Union faced off in an eight-game series, which became known as the Summit Series. It was for the bragging rights of who were the best hockey players in the world. It took Team Canada all eight games to prove that they were the better team. They've never played each other before this series, and uh, it went back to the Soviet Union. Four games in Canada, four in the Soviet Union, and in Game 8, uh, Team Canada was down 5-3 going into the third period, scored three unanswered goals to win. Uh, we had three of those players who played on that team uh, join us here on Raw Knuckles Podcast. We just had an awesome conversation. Serge Javad, who was a stellar defenseman during that series. Ivan Conway, who scored the tying goal with a little over seven minutes left in the game. And then with time winding down within the last minute of the game, Paul Henderson scoring uh, the goal heard round the world, and the Canadians won that game 6-5, uh, and there was elation all through Canada. 16 million out of 22 million Canadians watched that game, and 3,000 went over there uh, to see the game. And it, it was just an incredible time, incredible series, and uh, Canada came out on top. I hope you enjoy the conversation. When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down, and I never stayed down. And I was vicious, and I was malicious, and I don't care. <laughs> I'm alive. He's a freaking madman. Look at him going to town. That'll be a suspension. All right, welcome uh, to the Raw Knuckles Pause. Cast gentlemen, uh, awesome to have you today. I appreciate your time. I know you got to be busy. Uh, listen, I wanna, I wanna go back to '72 when you guys found out you were invited to training camp and you're gonna be part of, uh, have an opportunity to be part of this team. Was anybody a shoe in here? Serge, were you a definite? Ivan, were you a definite? And Paul. Were you a definite? I think I think Ivan was probably a definite. The rest, I think Paul wasn't sure. And personally, I wasn't sure at all. Uh, I, I was I had a big injury and I was off for a full year. And the only reason I think I, I was invited at camp is because guy like Dallas Smith, uh, Jacques Laperriere, they refused to report. So it's probably one of the reason and 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 later on, I found out when, when Fergie accepted to be the assistant general manager he says, uh, and coach, he says, I, I got to pick two players. And the two players he picked was me and uh, Peter Mahavlich. Oh, well, well, I, was def no. I, I was definitely an underdog. Ronnie Ellis and I played together. <clears throat> and we looked at the lineup and we thought at the very best, we might be number five, but we were probably number seven. And so we knew that we had to play our way on to the team. And so they put Bobby Clark with us. And after the first practice, the three of us sat down and we said, listen, the only chance, well, we, Ronnie and I wanted to play in Toronto. And so we said, let's get really serious and uh, let's see if we can be the shutdown line. They're probably going to need a shut line down. And we're all good defensive players. And, uh, you, you know, we're not going to be a, 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 a you know, we'll be able to take care of our own end. And so we, we got a lot more serious than a lot of guys did. And uh, as it turned out, uh, Bobby Clark was just a, wrong, a younger Norm Ullman, uh, a little more aggressive, obviously, but a great four checker, good playmaker. And so we were really fortunate. We didn't have to uh, uh, adjust very much. We just went out and worked our rear end off. And after a while, it became very evident that we were one of the better lines in camp. We played a a red white game and our line, uh, we our side won five three and I got two goals and Clark had got one and 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 we were, we knew within you know a week we were going to be in the in the lineup of Montreal. So you probably probably opened the eyes of Sinden for sure. How about yourself, Ivan? Well, I think uh, Paul, like he said, he was a very good uh, defensive uh, player, or he became one of the uh, offensive player. I think uh, I'll show him he knows that he scored the, the winning goal, the three games we have to win over there. So, but you know, uh, 
maybe of my speed, I, I figured that they were a fast team and uh, uh, maybe I, I was choosing because I, I, my, my skating was, you know, very fast. And uh, I, I, I had a good season. I was 28 years old and I was at my prime. So I think uh, that's why. Ivan, Ivan, was, Ivan was one of the few that he, he had a spot before training camp. Him and Espo and those guys. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Us, we had to work for her to get <laughs> to get into the lineup. <laughs> Maybe, uh, so, uh, listen, I want to ask the three is, and I grew up in that era. My dad was a military man, and I understood just what the Soviet Union was all about at a young age because my father talked to me a lot about it. I understood what life was like over there. He used to talk to me about that all the time, how fortunate I was to uh, grow up where I grew up, capitalism opposed to communism. So I, I, at a young age, I was 14 years old when this happened. How in touch with the political side of things were the three of you? Big Surge, I know you were always into politics, but uh -huh. at that time, were you aware? Well, I, 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 I tell you why. I tell you, we were not in, into politics. We got... We got into it and, and without noticing, you know, you, you, you were playing against a, a system that want to show the whole world that they're the best. They have the best system. They, they, they have the best training abilities. Uh, they have the best players. So, you know, it became politics. We turn around and say, well, listen, we invented that game, not you. It's our game. And it turned out to be a little bit of politics, but 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 you know we won the last three games, and not too many people give us that chances. How about yourself, Paul? Like, did you understand the political side of things before you went there? No, I, I really didn't give a, a a thought to that at all. I was just so excited that we were going to finally put these Russians in their place. I mean, and we knew they were good. But it's just like today, if a last place team plays a first place team, you know, you play a, a, an eight game, you know, seven game series, the, the last team team probably doesn't have much chance of winning. And that, I just thought we would overpower them. You know, you send a Cornway, Esposito, Mahovlich, and then you got the gag line, and you got Perot and Martin, and, and the defense, you know, we have the defense was a and I've often said, if I had a choice of when I played back then, I would pick uh, Lapointe and Savard against anybody. I mean, so I, we knew they were good, but we were just going to be better. That's all. Ivan? Well, I think it's the same way. I think uh, when, when we start, we wanted to prove that we're better than them. That's for sure. And everybody thought the same thing. And it became maybe policy when we had in Russia, maybe when we went to Russia, because we knew the difference, our system to their system. And we knew, you know, when, when you get the army on the street with guns and everything like this, and people waiting in line to have food and uh, not, not too many restaurants, we can go uh, stay at the hotel. People was there with, we have the key, the key, the key to the lady, uh, make sure that then we came back and have, have our key back for to who in the in the room. So it became politic, I think, when the 3,000 people who came in Russia, you know, they, they figured, wow, what a different country it is. And now all over the Canada, we started to talk about it. You know, it, it's it's the war because we were losing. So we said, whoa, now it became a war, uh, we have to win. So that, that was the difference, I think. Uh, but at first, no, no problem. So, uh, what but, was but that? Chris, yeah. Chris, Chris ahead, when, when we saw Brezhnev behind their, their, their goaltender in the fifth row, <laughs> we knew it was something special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you guys go to training camp. Harry Sinden's a coach, uh, coach of the Bruins. Um, and, and, you know, 35 guys come to camp. Um, not everybody plays. Serge, you didn't play in the first game. How how difficult was that for you not playing? Well, you played I, I, three games. 
You didn't I play. Was, I, I personally think he, he messed with the lineup a little too much, to be no, honest. No, with no, no. I was a little disappointed, but, but you know, uh, I thought I had a good camp and, and I finished strong. Uh, the problem is we were so sure to win. Harry told everybody before the series, everybody will have a chance to play. Uh, 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 and, and I think he made one major mistake. He dressed five defensemen the first game. That, that's, that's why it got really rough in the third period and it ended up 7-3. If he only dressed six defense, probably we don't win, but we don't lose 7-3. Uh, and a lot of people say, well, we, you guys are not in very good shape, but 48 hours later, we beat them. Yeah. And, and let's face it, some of you probably weren't in the best shape, right? I mean, um, back in that day, we came to training camp to get in shape. So do you yeah, think but, 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 but Chris, that was probably the toughest camp I ever been to. You know, we, 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 equipment was not like it is today. We practiced twice a day. No air condition in the garden was like a hundred degrees in that building. <laughs> and we had to put the wet equipment on in the afternoon, uh, twice a day. To me, it was the toughest camp I ever been to. I was, I was in shape at the end of the camp. Excellent. But you know, you know, Chris, uh, the, the report we had, that was, that was disgusting because uh, I had a hockey school and I was working from Toronto to Montreal, Montreal to Toronto. And I didn't give a damn too much about like Serge said, we, we, we practiced, that was hot weather and we practiced very hard, two, two games, two practices a day. Uh, but mentally, I don't think we were ready. And we just say, oh, well, we got in shape and uh, we're going to beat them. It's so easy. Uh, the goal is no good. The, the guys don't know how to skate. Uh, they have bad stick, bad skate. Uh, I mean, you know, we say, wow, okay, so it's going to be easy and we win the eight games, but it's not the way it turned out. No question. Um, so, sir, you thought uh, Harry was going to get everybody in the game. So you guys... You end up, you, you win the second one, you tie the third, then you lose those two games. And Phil came out and had a few things to say about uh, the fans in, in the country, how the, he didn't feel like they were behind this team. Uh, what type of impact do you think that had on the outcome uh, moving forward, going over to Russia? Phil's kind of tirade there when he come out and said the fans were born, we didn't deserve it. Did that affect you guys in the room? Paul? Well, I don't see, we didn't see it. That's it. Phil come in and said he teed off, but we, we, they should have showed us that. But the good news is the Canadian people woke up and that's when they decided to get behind it. But, but I, I think everybody agrees that Phil was our leader on and off the ice. And, and, and I think that, you know, in 72, he's the best forward in all of hockey. And I would even suggest to you in Russia, like he just put us on his shoulder and carried us in a lot of ways. And <laughs> the guy is just, a, is just a tremendous leader. But I, I didn't see it for years afterwards. He I don't, probably, think, he I, I don't well, think he did either. Well, I, I think I think Phil played his best hockey of his career. Uh, I saw him, I even saw him in front of our own net. He never done that in the National Hockey League. He never came back. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good observation. <laughs> uh, All yeah. right. So you guys, you end up, you're heading to Russia and you're down 3-1. You play those games in Sweden uh, and then you get to Russia. Listen, I went there back in 2003 after um, Perestroika, and they were still a little bit in the dark ages, but they were coming out of it. I got to tell you, the culture shock I had in 2002, 2003, I, I was like, it, it was a weird feeling. I can only imagine what it was like for you guys. Now, you're with a team. I get it. And I was with a team, too. But boy, what was that like for you going to Russia the first time back in 72? Like, 
to see how they live and see how the, the they're very hard people. And what effect did that have on the three of you? If, I, I, can, I can say, if we're going Canada to Russia, we're to lose. First of all, what really saved us is the two exhibition games we play in Switzerland. And because now I think, and, and what, before, before that, when we left Canada, I said, we, we used to, to win on the road. We're Canadian and we, we, we a lot in the playoff and the playoff is eight games maximum. So you have to win all the games and the games are hard to win is the last game to win the Stanley Cup. And th those games are hard to work, to win, I mean. But I think, and, and we're coming from the small highs to a big highs. And the angles are all different. And it's unbelievable how different it is to get used to the big highs. So uh, over there, we, 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 like Serge uh, said, we, we were a team. And that was the same guys all the time. And we stayed together. So we have to know most of the guys better. So that's why I think uh, those two games saved us. Well, how, how about yourself, Paul? Like the culture itself, when you got there, not so much on the ice, but just, you know, the hotel, the people, the food. Did they mess with you a little bit, the Russians? Oh, they may have, but I, I really felt sorry for them. Even we just landed, we drove, it was at night, and we drove into Moscow. And all of us, I never saw a house. And they were all apartment buildings. And then you would see the lamp or the light, just a light bulb coming down from the ceiling in the apartments that there was a light on. And, it, and, and then when we get over there, everything was just uh, a drab. They were either were, it was brown or, or gray. And uh, I had to deal with a, a slot company at the time. And I had this, I had some just plaid, uh, pants on. I got 18 <laughs> pairs in the spring and the fall, and people wanted to take pictures of my bloody in my clothes, my my slacks, and so. But there was, you know, and it was just. And you know what? we really, Chris. The worst was we go. They got beautiful uh, museums, and we would pull up on the bus, and there would be 50, 500 people, big lineup, trying to get, get in, and the the Red Army would go up, put a rifle in front of them push them back and we would go in. And like I did, we didn't even want to go in. The, the, treat, the people were treated like a piece of crap. And uh, the stores, there was nothing anyway. It, it was, I felt so sorry for them. When we got home, I said, if I owned a company, I would take all my employees over there for a week and I'll sh they'll sure as hell come home and be so glad that they live in Canada. And so we knew that communism just doesn't work. And then it became a pride issue. I think at the end, it was our way of life against theirs for sure. I mean, we wanted to win, but I, I felt sorry for them. And you know, the bad part about, we hated the Russians in 72, but you know what? We got to know them afterwards. And you know, they're just like trying to keep a wife happy, trying to raise a family, you know? And uh, boy, we got it so great. We live in the greatest country in the world. And we sure as hell knew it when we got back from Russia. How about you, sir? Do you, I, I know you like the finer things in life. When you, got to, <laughs> <laughs> when you got to Moscow, I can't imagine, like the food, um, just well, we, we, we were, uh, us, the team, we had our own chef. We brought our own food. Uh, we were was no was wow. only Canadian in our hotel, so we didn't miss anything. Some guy said, "Well, they stole our sticks, they stole our beer," but I I never felt that. And and what we played every second night. We didn't have much time, you know. Yeah. To, the the organized tour to visit, and I I didn't feel like going. I was tired. You know, we played every second night, you know. And uh, I, I'm like Paul. I felt sorry for those people. You know, you, you had army people at the door of the hotel. The regular citizen were not allowed to walk in a hotel. They didn't, They weren't allowed to see what it looks like in Western of this world, in the West of the world. Yeah. So, so yeah, and, and we became friends uh, 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 of those guys. You know, we met them for, uh, 10 years later, 15 years later, 25 years later. Uh, Yakuchev at the at the Hall of Fame, and 
And, and you know, when, when we meet those guys, you know, we, we, we hug together, we hug like, like brothers and, and that that's the way it is. You know, that they don't see the Russian people that, that on that team, they don't see that as a loss. You know, we see that as a win yeah. for them, for them, both teams won and they're probably right. I think yeah. that, that that series was, was very, very good for hockey. Uh, Chris, I got a little story yeah. for you with the Russian uh, Tretiak. And we were going to Toronto to sign autograph and Tretiak just coming from uh, Russia. So I got to pick him up at uh, Mirabel. And I said, well, we have about five hours to go to Toronto. And I said to uh, Tretiak, I said, you know what? We're going to go home. It's about 80 degrees. And maybe we got to wait to take the next flight. So I arrived home. I got a red bathing suit. I said, you know what? You, you want to go for a swim? He said, you know, we have five hours and it's nice. And especially the bathing suit is red. So, <laughs> so that, was, that was the right color. So he, he jumped in my pool and I look, I said, I never thought in my life, never, I would have a Russian in my pool. So <laughs> we hated it so, so much. I said, wow, what a different situation than it is now. And after that, we went to Toronto and signed autograph for, that was a beautiful day. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Most people are worried about people going in the bathroom, peeing in their pool. You're worrying about Russians in the pool. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the, um, it, it, well, I guess over there, you go in there, and th this is a huge hill to climb for this team. You're in a hole like you are. Was there any time over in Russia, you're playing that first game there. What was said before the game by the coaching staff or any of the leaders on the team? Was there anybody who stood up and said, hey, boys, you know, let's get this thing turned around? No, not really. Not really. We were, uh, we were nervous. And especially because, you know, we knew if we lose that first game in Russia, we're in trouble. But we said, oh, not, a, not that again. I mean, we were, I think, we, I don't know if we were leading a little bit the first period. We were leading by two in the third we're period. That, by that's, two. That, that's one game we should have never lost, the first one and, in Moscow. And, and yeah. then we lost that game. So, like Serge said, you know, we said, oh, no, not that again. And after that, we said, wow, we, we have to play game by game. Each game is very important. And we play. You know, it's almost like shift by shift and period by period we have to play. And uh, we, were, we were lucky, like uh, Serge said, we, uh, we came back for and win the uh, next game. Game by game, game by game. We don't, we, you know, I guess we play it right. You didn't have to, you can't look forward and say we have to win the next three. You have to win the next one and, and see, see what happened after. And that's exactly what happened. And, uh, I'm, I'm pretty proud, and uh, I guess Pete Mahalovich's best play was this, it's when he came off the ice and he let you go, Paul, <laughs> with half a minute to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Paul certainly s scored the uh, the winner in Game Six, Game Seven, and Game Eight. What, um, God? Uh, let's go back to Game Six again. They scored the the. Um, a goal after you scored the winner, but those game seven and eight, you scored those winning goals. Like uh, how huge was that for you? Like a boost of confidence and, and, and going back to the NHL after that, did it boost your confidence? Well, the interesting thing about it, <clears throat> I, like uh, my two assets were my shot and my speed. And I said to my wife that, uh, this is going to fit right into my wheelhouse. Yvonne and I, you know, we were probably two of the fastest guys in the league and we could shoot the puck. And so I went over there with a fair bit of confidence. And, uh, and I actually scored two goals in the first game over there. And I think the reason we lost that game, we played the third period almost shorthanded. I mean, they just, some of the penalties they called on us. And so they scored three power play goals in the third period. But anyway, we're skating around. Uh, the first we get on the ice and Fergie uh, come up to me and he said, you know, Henny, we're really counting on you to come up big for us. And he said that, uh, you know, you've got some speed here and you need to use it. And 
if we're going to win this, we need your line to come up big. And, you know, like we have, well, two Hall of Famers right here, but we have 12 Hall of Famers on there. And I tell you what, I never once ever thought about being a hero. I was just so friggin' happy to just to, you know, be with these guys and, you know, prove to myself that I could play. But yeah, and I was uh, in the sixth game. I was, I remember I intercepted a pass just over center ice. The defenseman made a bad pass. And what I tried to do was just use the defenseman. And I, I, yeah, I, I was using him as a screen and I just snapped it. And I don't think he was ready for it. And I, I was trying to shoot it right along the ice, just inside the post and went inside. And so, but, but I'll tell you the, the best goal I ever scored in my life. Cause we went on in the seventh game, I looked up at the clock and there was just over two minutes. And I said, you know, this is going to be my last shift. I got to get a goal. And, Serge Savard gave me a pass at center at center ice. And I look up and there's two forwards and two defensemen back. I never beat two defensemen in my life in the NHL. Pro <laughs> used to do it. Cornway used to do it. <laughs> and honest Liar. to God, I scored that goal. Honest to God. I, and I said to my wife after the game, I will never score a bigger goal in my life. If we don't win that one, the last game means nothing. <laughs> and then two days later, I score a garbage. I scored seven goals. Six were really nice. The only garbage goal was the last one, and it was Cornway <laughs> on the ice. If he had, if he hadn't been for these two guys, we'd have never won it. And yeah. I've Even, had to listen. Uh, I've I've had to listen. Henderson makes a wild stab forward and falls. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves to hear that, don't you? And then I almost broke, broke Cornway's back when I jumped into his arms. <laughs> That's why he's, he's had a sore back ever since. Well, yeah, four four back surgery uh, for Ivan. <laughs> oh, Paul, uh, was a lot of uh, all of famer on that team, and I personally think you should be there too. And uh, and and I nominate you once, and uh, you didn't get in. But uh, I think for the fiftieth anniversary, it would be a great year for you to get in. I'll give a search. I search. I really. Like the worst thing you could do is put me in because now people come up to me all the time. They said, change the friggin' name of their place. Don't call it the hockey hall of fame. <laughs> <you're four favorite." laughs> but see, if, search, if they ever put me in, people wouldn't be ticked off. They'd forget all about me. So I'm a lot better on the outside. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, well, I, 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 I really thought that, uh, you know, you, you, you did score the most important goal in the history of this country and you should be there. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that, Big Serge. Uh, you know, I, again, I don't know the whole process, but it, a guy like Pat Burns, uh, they put him in. I, <laughs> it, it, they say it's never too late, but I think they put him in too late. So I, I just hope for you, Paul, they do. And uh, you get that opportunity. You certainly belong. Uh, in there so uh, we look at at that series and you know i watch game eight and the referee and you know me and referees i don't care for referees, <laughs> but god game eight and and well we go back to game six bobby clock with the slash and things got a little ugly um but game eight at the beginning i watched it the other day again and i'm like geez they were whistle happy it seemed like they were trying to control it, but what do you think about the refereeing in that game, especially early? And then we see J.P. Parisi go up and threaten the ref with his stick, and God, I'm so glad he held up and he didn't swing it. But uh, He never intended to do it, and uh, that's too bad. Yeah. But if you look at my record, I have, I have no problem with the referee. I didn't get one penalty. <laughs> Good for you. Penalty. You're a clean player. <laughs> I didn't get one penalty, you know. I have one penalty, and you know uh, the last game, uh, Chris. I saw your penalty. It was a cross check from behind. You went for his ribs. I saw you. I know. I know. Right. But but the last game, we said nobody was talking too much after the second period, and we said the only thing we said it's don't let him score another goal, because if we losing by by what that was five three. They yeah. were losing by two goals. So if they score early in the game, now we got three goals. We got to come back. So, at, at, at me four goals because uh, we're losing five three. 
And when Phil score, I would make it 5-4. And after that, make it 5-5, but they still said they're going to win the series because they have more goals than us. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the, the hockey was those days. I, I, I didn't see the guy, Ivan, but, but I was told that somebody from the Russian came behind our bench and say we're winning the series if the game is tied. Apparently, somebody came behind the bench. We knew that. We knew yeah. that. Yeah. Anyway, I think they make, they make a big, big mistake after we scored the, 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 the winning goal, Paul scored the winning goals. They don't have the mentality to go in overtime. And they never try to take the goalie out. And yeah. They play five against five. But, you know, the mentality was like, like, like the Olympics. You know, the game is tied and, and that's it. But then losing by one goal, you have to try to take the goalie out because if you lose by two, you, 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 you lose anyway. Yeah. But they never try to take the goalie out. And that's, I liked it a lot. They very, uh, they very did a, a big mistake. Well, we know Paul scored that winning goal, but you got the tying goal in that game with Espo. And, um, you know, that was just pure tenacity going to the net. You've got the first shot, then the rebound. Big surge, I saw you um, do the spinorama on the blue line, come in, and you missed the net from the slot. My man, what's going on? I didn't <laughs> miss the net. I, 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 we score on that, on that play. Phil score on that play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you I think I missed that? You, you don't think I tried to pass it to him? <laughs> <laughs> um, looking um, at game eight again, uh, and all that happened in there, what happened uh, when you guys had to go over and help Alan Eagleson out and and walk him across the ice? What happened there? Well, we, we didn't know, you know, first thing we knew he was on the ice. So everybody, everybody jumped over the, uh, we didn't know what happened. Yeah. So we know, we knew Eagleson was a little wild, but, but we, we, we all went there and protect him, you know? So well, it was Peter Mahovlich. I, I didn't, I didn't know anything was going on until I see Peter grab a hold of him. And, and so Peter was the first to recognize that he was in trouble. So it was Peter, Peter Mahovlich was the, it's a wonder that the, 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 the you know the, the Red Army didn't shoot him. <laughs> well, they yeah, I, I, he, uh, Alan start to get to get wild when the guy then turned the lights on behind the net yeah. on one of our goal. He went wild. Yeah. He, he and then they they intercept him. He was going <laughs> at the guys. They intercept him. That that's the story I got. You, um, you know, Chris, I was the first one to go and help him, but I could not go over the board. My leg was too, too <laughs> not long enough. So that's why, that's why Pete, Pete went, went over the board because he's got much longer, longer legs. But, uh, that, that was, uh, I, I, I think that that would have been a good thing. Maybe he doesn't go either. Maybe he would have stayed there for a long time. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> well, the, um, you know, the roster was 35 man roster and some guys got over to Russia and um, how difficult was that for you guys to see some of the guys in your group go back home? They didn't feel like they were getting enough playing time. Did that affect you guys at all? And what do you think about it? I, I, well, think I think go ahead, Serge, go ahead. Uh, well, yeah, ju just, just uh, I think when I had feel left, you know, everybody went to see Hatfield. Rattel went to see Hatfield. Gilbert was, went to see Hatfield. Said, "Don't do this, don't do that." Don't. That year, that was the the number one line in the National Hockey League. Gilbert, Rattel, Hatfield, and he was humiliated. And uh, and for uh, for me, I think that united our uh, our team. So if you want to go, go. And the one that want to stay, we're together. And uh, Gilbert Perrault told me uh, another story. You know, some of the guys said they left because Punch Punch told them to come back if you're not going to play. And Gilbert said he went to see Sendon and he said, oh, you got to play me. And Sendon said, no. He says, do you mind if I go back home? That's the, that's the story of Gilbert that he told me that last year. Well, I think it was, uh, you know, I, I think it was... 
today we've always, there was 35 of us, including all of those guys, and we hold nothing against them. But I think there was a distraction. And so when the guys left, and, and you can't blame them, we were losing and they weren't able to play. And so we hold nothing against them whatsoever. And I, I thought it was a good deal to get out of here. And we were basically down to the team now. The last three games, maybe one or two changes. And so the, I, I thought it was no problem at all. And today, like Vic, a, a good friend, and we held nothing against them whatsoever. And you have to make a decision. And like Serge said, yeah. they were embarrassed. I, and uh, so, I, uh, I, I, I agree with you on one point. Uh, he didn't stay. If he would have stayed, it would have been a big distraction for the team. So that, that, that turned out to be good. But, but my thought on that, you know, it, if you're at war, you don't leave the army. So I, I think he was wrong, but it turned out to be okay. How about um, the team when the likes of Bobby Hull, Derek Sanderson, who are going to be there, Jerry Chivas, they signed with the WHA and they weren't allowed to be part of this team. What did Bobby you guys do? Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull. And Bobby Hull, that's what I said. Bobby, wh what, what did you guys think of that? Did you, did you want to see him there, or were you like, hey, you're in the WHA, see you later. You don't belong here. I didn't want him there at all. It was perfect. He was a left winger. If he comes <laughs> I'm down the list, the best thing in the world that he didn't come. <laughs> I thought, Bobby I would Hull. See I would say to you, I would say to you, the only guy that I think would have made a difference was Bobby Orr. I don't think Hull would have changed it that much or anybody else. I mean, there was a lot of good players, Sanderson and those. They're good players, but I don't think the way it turned out. Uh, but I think that if Bobby Orr would have been healthy and been able to play, I think he he would have really tilted the scales. But but anyway, when I heard that he couldn't play, perfect, perfect. <laughs> well, I would, I, I would have taken Bobby Hall any, any day of the week. Uh, well, no, we all would. <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, the, the, Alan told me I, I, last year, I called Alan, he told me that story about, about, about Bobby Hall. Uh, he was not to, supposed to, to say anything about Team Canada. And he was in Halifax in the, in the press conference, and he mentioned that he was going to be with Team Canada. And, and the league turned around and banned those players. If he didn't say anything, he was told not to say anything. And he mentioned that in Halifax, and that's where it started. That's the way it was, you know. Same thing with GC Trombley, uh, but probably GC, GC, GC was at the end of his career. Bob, Bobby All was still in his prime. But I agree, Bob, Bobby All was the best player in the National Hockey League. Uh, Bobby Orr, healthy. Our team is much better. Yeah, I thought about that, what it would have been like if Orr was there. There's no question. And um, let, let's talk about the goaltending. Um, God, they, didn't have a good, they, didn't, they didn't have a good series. <laughs> well, well, well let, let's think about this for a second. Being a head coach or being a manager and you here in the NHL, you have a goaltender in the playoffs – you play that guy. There's no going back and forth. Here you are in, you know, this summit series, this huge series against the Soviets. And boy, the changing of the goalies, to me, that surprised me when I look back at it. What, uh, what did you think of that? And Ken Dryden even said, and I don't know, if, God, I could believe it, but he said if he didn't win that game eight, it would have changed his whole career. I don't know about that. It wasn't well, tough was surprised. Go ahead, Serge. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I was absolutely astounded that he put Dryden in the last game. Yeah. Yeah, you're I, right. I, I, I would have I would have bet anything that it was going to be Tony because Tony certainly outplayed him uh, from my perspective. But I would say with Dryden, that was definitely the best game that he had in the whole spirit, and especially in the third period. He came up bigger. And then so, but, but you know, the, the really neat thing about, yeah, I think he would, but we, that's why you, we were a team by this time and whatever, ever Harry said uh, that was going to be it. And so uh, 
but yeah, I, I thought Tony played better than he did uh, in the series. What about you, Vaughn? Uh, about the story about Ken Ryder, I, I, I find Ken is one of the biggest, nicer goalie than I had. Uh, you, you keep us, you know, we lost 10 games one year and another year we lost eight games. If we don't have Ken be, behind in the net, I don't think we can do that. But we, after the first game, they scored seven goals on him. And we go to Winnipeg after that, after uh, Torres Spirito win the second game. And he, we were practicing and he was looking for a skate. He was dressing and he could not find <laughs> my skate. So he was looking and looking and looking. And <laughs> he, he had no, so he finally get up and went to the room and his skate was holding the door so the door doesn't close. So one guy, one player said to him, he said, you know what? Everything went in in the first game. So we put to skate to the door so the door don't, don't close and open. That's the only good stop. <laughs> so he, he finally find his skate holding the door. Uh, but he was, he was, for me, he was one of the best goalie I ever had in my career. Yeah. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. I'm a, I'm a little different. I never had a good goaltender. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like La Mea. You know, the, 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 the defenseman make the goalie. <laughs> and, and, and no, more, I mean, I, I mean the good teams. You know, a good team. A good team makes a better coach. A good team makes a better goalie. I, 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 I look at all the stats in Montreal. Uh, I remember before we played Ivan, Gump Worsley was in New York and Jacques Plante in Montreal. Worsley had the worst average in the league. And then they made a trade and Worsley won the, the Vezina Trophy the following year in Montreal. You, you know, when we passed the, when we passed the game on the other zone, the goal is has got much more time to be a very good goalie. <laughs> but Kenny, Kenny was a good goalie and... and and he, he had a tough time in that series up to game eight. Yeah, you're yeah. right, Ron. I I, uh, I was surprised myself you know, in the eight games. Yeah. What um, I, I got to ask about Harry Sinden as a coach, and, and I remember game eight when you won it. I listened to it on the radio. I had an interest in this game because of the Boston Bruins and Harry Sinden. Now, I know it wasn't as big in the States as it was in Canada. Uh, the, the millions of people who watched it in Canada. But I remember I was at my friend Eddie Kenny's house and we listened to the third period of that game. Um, and Harry Sinden, again, I wanted to ask about him and I guess the impact he had on the series. And what was he like as a coach, Harry? I think, I think for me, uh, the most important game was in Toronto. And, and if we don't want that game, I don't think we can come back and win again the series. But I think he did some good move. He, uh, he, he told us to, to, he tries, told us to train hard and he make us train a little bit harder. But he, he, he did for me, he did, he did the right move. And he, he, was, he was a good coach for me. He was a good guy, first of all. And he wanted to win. But, yeah, uh, well, Ivan, I, I hated Boston at that time, and you, yeah. you, you did too. And uh, I, I, I didn't like Sinden, I, I didn't like Phil. Uh, but, you know, after that series, that's really the first time the National Hockey League get together. We were, we were taught not to talk to those guys. Yeah. And, and, and all of a sudden, you dress for two months beside one of those guys, like Bobby Clark. I hate, I hate Bobby Clark with passion. And, 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 and then I, I sat with him in the, the same room for two months and he turned out to be a good friend of mine today. And, and we, after that, it changed the whole National Hockey League. We, you know, we say hello in the warm up to Phil and we never done that before. It, it changed things around a little bit and hockey started to change because of that series. And we start to, like, uh, Bowman was one of the first guys to start new things. Uh, maybe we should train differently, and 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 I, I think that series changed uh, the face of hockey. Yeah, well, I got to tell you about Harry. Talk about an instinct. Uh, Clarky and Ronnie and I were out in the ice, and he sent Phil and uh, Yvonne and uh, Peter Mahovlich out there, 
And then he came down to us and he said, if they come off, you're up. And, uh, you know, it wasn't our turn. It was the next line and everything like that. And and and, and I don't know whether you know this or not, but I, I, I'm sitting on the bench and about the one minute mark, I, I did something I never did before, Chris, never did it again. I, 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 I got to get on the ice. We got to win this game because they told us if we don't win, they're going to get a claim. And so I started yelling at Peter Mohavlich, who was out there, and Frank was sitting beside me, and Frank says, the hell are you doing? And I just, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so, you know, and so I jump over the boards and if I, you know, you imagine the difference in my life would have been if I hadn't scored that last goal. Like I'm the only guy that played 18 years of pro hockey and known for one friggin' goal only. <laughs> but that well, was, that's not but a that, bad one to be known for. <laughs> but that was Harry's instinct. Can you believe that? He must have felt that, you know, maybe, because, I mean, we'd scored a few goals, but that, I often thought back on that. Why the hell would he ever tell us to go back? And then, you know, the interesting thing, Chris, we come back to the bench and he said to us, you go out, finish the last 34 seconds. And I said to him, Harry, please put somebody else up there. I was done mentally, physically, I would have been petrified to play the last 34 seconds. I saw that. I saw Phil was out there, right? Christ, he was out there for the last minute and a half of the game, I think. And he says, don't get caught in the last 34 seconds, and we did. <laughs> no, no, Clark and Ellis, and, and I think it was Dennis Hawley put out. And I, and I told him, Harry, please, don't. I, I would be petrified to play the last 34 seconds. I did was you answer like back around? Did you answer back to, to Frank? Did you tell him what you were doing? No, I just, <laughs> just, I just kept yelling at Peter. You but know, you well, know and you did, I never did that again. I never did it before, never did it again. And I still can't explain. I just did it like that. I got to get uh, I'm surprised Peter came off. Well, so am I. We were exhausted. <laughs> I was, I was, I was the, the, the other side of the ice, and I was thinking to change because the coach always said, if the game is tied and they have their puck behind the net, come to the bench. And I was just exhausted. So I look at the bench and that was Olympic ring, ring, ring. I said, I'm never going to make it. There's no way. So I stay there. But Paul said, um, when he jumped in my arms, he said, I, I, I think I broke your back. But Paul, he did broke my back because the Stanley Cup is, is heavier than you. <laughs> And you jump in my arms and I said, we did it. We did it. We, and the pressure just came like, wow, right down. Well, how many Stanley Cups did you win up to that point, Ivan? Oh, uh, I must have won maybe four or five. Okay, so four or five up to that point. Yes. Maybe what six, was, six. You've been in game sevens before. Yeah. What did game eight compare to a game seven in the NHL? Well, they both great. I mean, to win the Stanley Cup is a dream come true. I mean, you, you're a kid and you, you, you dream to win the Stanley Cup and play for the Montreal Canadiens or play for whatever other team when you win the Cup. Even uh, Ray Book changed team to win the Cup. Yeah. I mean, and he went to somewhere else. But we, we didn't know. We didn't know what's going to happen because we know we did something. But we didn't know the impact that everybody, like 16 million out of the 22 million, watched the game. We didn't know that. And we, we, we knew that was, you know, we, we hated the Russian and they hated us. And that's something that we had to do, I think. And then when Paul scored, I, I swear, wow, we, we finally did it. We, that's what people are expecting to, to us to win. And, you know, Stanley Cup is, is the same, but it's only like the team, the people who, who rode for Montreal, they, 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 they're happy we win. But now there, it's all Canada who was happy then when we finally said we're the best than them and we finally win. How about, I've got to ask about, because I love this guy, John Ferguson, <laughs> being there as an assistant coach. Did that guy not... Because Fergie's a tough guy, and you're over there, and it's a very hostile environment. Did you, he give you a little bit of security, knowing that Fergie's there, big Fergie? I think Paul's got the story about John Ferguson. He talked to Paul. <laughs> hey, Paul? 
you got it. You got it. Is everybody loved the guy? And you know the thing about we hated when we played off, against off the, the ice. Off, off the, the ice. <laughs> off the ice. He was one of the nicest guys in the world. He really was. Like I just like something happened to him. He put us on the uh, put on those skates, and his eyes would glass over. And holy crap, no matter what. The last fight I had in the in the NHL was with Ferguson in the, in the Detroit. He come around the net and I nailed him, knocked him as an arse, you know. <laughs> we go back to the face-off again. They drop the puck and he, he suckered me. <laughs> and I went goofy. Thank God they got in there and broke it up or I'd have probably got killed. But off the ice, everybody says the same thing. One of them that would do anything for anybody. And it's tragic that he, he's not around to, you know, be with us because everybody uh, had so much respect for him. I, I think you, Big Surge, <laughs> Big Surge <laughs> were, you, were you as close with Fergie back then as you became? Or were you yeah. with him then? Yeah. Yeah, we became, we became very close in Montreal when we played together. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, and on top of that, I had some horses. He had some horses, and we got to see each other more often. Uh, was a very, very good friend. Uh, Fergie's one of the nicest guys you can find off the ice. And uh, on the ice, he was probably, to me, sorry, uh, Chris, he was probably the toughest guy I've seen. That's okay. <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> fine no, with no, that. but I, I mean, uh, uh, in this time, Nobody, nobody wants to go against Fergie. Nobody wants to go against Fergie, and I think he worked out very, very well with Iris and 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 and, and the guys like him, and and you he talked to the guys, and that was a you know both of those guys weren't working in the National Hockey League at that time. You know, Iris had left Boston and, and contract dispute, right? Yeah, and and and, and Fergie. And Fergie, same thing. And they, they both got jobs after that. Fergie got named in New York, and and, and Harry went back in, in Boston. And uh, that was that, that series was great for them as well. All right. So let's talk about, woo, the celebration. How was the celebration after? Like, you guys flew home? One, one, one thing, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, the, no. the celebration. But, but before, you were talking about the seventh game. Yeah. Uh, uh, Go ahead. Yeah. This, uh, you know, I let I let my battery is low. I I let other answer, and I have to plug my my, my computer. Okay. Okay. I. Uh, uh, what was it like there after the game, the celebration, the locker room, and then did you stay there that night and fly oh, yeah. home the next day? We stayed there that night, but we went to the the ceremony after because we had a ceremony to go. But I didn't see too many Russian coming. I think there were a few missing over there. But we have another game to play. Don't forget that. We have to go to Czechoslovakia. And okay. we have another game to play that was an exhibition game. And I don't think we were in, in, in too much shape to, uh, to uh, win that game. But uh, we, we, we end up with a tie. So that was not too bad. But a lot of people don't know. When we left Russia in the plane, everybody went up and sing O Canada. Remember, Paul? Went and tried to get up when the DCA just leave the, the, the runway. And, but we all get up and sing O Canada. And uh, th that was, I don't know why, but that was the, the sentiment of the, all the guys say, hey, we won and we get out of here. What a great feeling that must well, have been. But Chris, he, he, I'll tell you what, there was no jumping around. We went back into the room <clears throat> and they had some beer in there. And I, it was probably 25 minutes before I took my skates off. And we weren't yeah. going crazy. We're just looking across the room and smiling at one another. But we weren't hugging anything like that in the room. It was just, and I think it was just, we were done. And we and knew Paul, we did uh, it. we had gone to war. And it was just pretty, pretty calm. And you just, you know, smiles and that. But we weren't and, running and, around and hugging people and that. And Paul we, we had two rooms. So the bad thing about that, too, we had two bloody rooms. And there was a bunch in one room and a bunch in another. And that the Russians, you know, wanted to separate us, I guess. But uh, And one of my favorite pictures 
is a, my wife and I, I'm sitting back there and this is, and I am, I got a beer in my hand and just smiling. And you know, the sped is just running down your face. And, and uh, just like Yvonne said, we did it. And that was this, uh, is, do you guys remember that? I remember that distinctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that, that was the night, Paul, that you give your jersey to the trainer that eventually sold for $1.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> That's what those bloody concussions do for you, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, well, imagine. Yeah, we were, you know, it's not like winning in Montreal after a game, everybody goes out and goes wild and... Uh, you know, we had a ceremony after everybody was there with their wife, and uh, that that was that was pretty special. That was pretty special, and and we played. We had a game. You know, the toughest thing. Why we have to play another game after Crazy. after theory like that? And and we went in Czechoslovakia, and uh, and uh, we had uh, Stan Mikita with us, and you know, it, it was common as there too, just like in Russia, and. And so his brother and his mother, he could, they couldn't travel. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I always remember the mother at the, at, at the bus, at the, the door of the bus when we left and crying. And, oh. and, and, and Stan said, I don't know if I'll see them again. You know, Dennis Hall, Dennis Hall said, you know, Dennis Hall never win the Stanley Cup. So I was, he was resting beside me. And he looked at me and he said, Ivan, is it like that when you win the Stanley Cup? I said, Dennis, you don't know. You never win. <laughs> <laughs> well, for somebody who has 11 of them, um, you know. Henry, 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 Henry got 11. Oh, I got Henry got, how many you got? 10? Ten? Ten. 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 Sorry. Ten. 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 I made one. I was one off. Paul, that's the worst part about playing in Montreal, right? For me, I walk around today, right? And people will see me and they'll go, hey, Chris, how many cups you got? I go, one. They go, only one? <laughs> <laughs> like, only one? If you knew what it took to get that one, you bastards. <laughs> they don't have a well, clue. Well, you know, the first game when I was in Detroit, I got made Detroit my first year. And I remember walking in there and seeing all the Hall of Famers. Remember all the pictures around the wall? Yeah. Like I, th I thought I was in a shrine. Honest to God, it was so. And, and this is the rocket had retired in, in, uh, in uh, what, well, 58, I guess it was. And Lin, Teddy Lindsay had come back. He was playing with us. And we're in the warm up, and the rocket, and, and, uh, and uh, you talk about guys hating each other. I, I, Lindsay goes around and he said, You lily pad jumper. And the rocket's up there. Up, this is in the warm up. What the hell is going on here? But, you know, I hated the, like, even in junior, and I told Cornwall, we could never beat the bloody Montreal Canadiens. You were won the, the Memorial Cup. We never won a game against them. And thank God they had to play Niagara Falls before we got to them. And Niagara Falls put them out, and then we owned Niagara Falls. But we didn't win very often. I'll tell you what, but one of my great memories is I was in the penalty box and uh, Eva, uh, Henri Richard had the puck and he came back and, and he made a, a bad pass, but he didn't think anybody was there because I just come out and I got the thing and I rifled it into the top corner. He come over and he was ready to give me a two hand. And I said, I said, to him, thank you, Henri. <laughs> That's my best memory out of Montreal. <laughs> How about, Serge, uh, I'll start with you. Today, there's a lot of young kids out there play hockey that don't have a clue what the Summit Series is all about. What, what is something that I guess you could tell them to get them to understand just the impact that this had on, on Canadian society and on hockey in general? Well, they'll hear a lot about it this year because, you know, I look at the paper at La Presse yesterday, it was 10 pages. They had an interview with Paul and they, the 10 pages in La Presse yesterday about That's the awesome. series. They, they went to a game by game and, uh, you know, everywhere I go, and I'm sure it's like Paul, especially Paul, more often than I, than I do, 
But every every time and then comes a few questions, and every time the subject of Team Canada comes, you can hear a silence in the room. Everybody pay attention, especially the people that were born after 1980. They all remember where they were when that happened. You know, Canada had 22 million people in, 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 uh, in 1972 and 16 million people saw the last game on television. That, that's the that's highest rate. Right. So, so, so everything stops. The country stops on, on the eight games. This is, you know, you were talking about the seven game, how you compare with that. The seven game happened almost every year. But the eight games, it's one of the lifetime, and, and you'll never see that before. And and for me, that's my greatest moment in in in, in hockey. Uh, I, I turn around when Paul score, and Ken Dryden was right there. You know, Ken Dryden never never came off his net on the seventh game uh, in Chicago, for example, in 1971. Uh, but he did. You know, the emotion, the emotion. That's one thing they didn't have like we did emotionally. And, and that's the highest that, that, that we could be emotionally in that series. I think, Chris, uh, the next week, uh, September 1st is starting. And this is where the, the young guys who didn't know about 1972, I think they're going to know. Because uh, like Sir said, you know, the, the, the paper is going to be full of, uh, of that series. And uh, we have a, a few uh, a few times together. We're gonna have a few times together. And I think, sir, I don't know, but the 28th, I think we got an exhibition games against Toronto and much. We'll, we'll have a few beers together as well. We got a few <laughs> <laughs> and we got a gin too. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah, and you got you got the beer and the gin, and in the back you got the pitcher. You see the the gin in the back. You have you got the picture of the one and go. Oh, that is awesome! That can you is can awesome. you see can you see yeah. the background? Yeah, move it over a little. Yeah, can you see the background? Put it in front of your face though, so we can see it. Yeah, can you see yeah. the background? Oh you yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Uh, and uh, and the liquor board, the LCBO in Toronto and uh, in Ontario and all over the the. They, they, they bought 5,000 cases so far, and they say it's going to go in the first two weeks. Paul, so you should hang a, on. Paul should hang on to a case of that, kind of like his jersey. You know, he didn't hang on the jersey. You might want to grab a ball. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll have some. You know, this product is coming, is coming uh, uh, in the first week of uh, September. And I, I, I'll have some this week. Uh, Ivan, I'm going to send some and every player will get a, a case of gin and a case of beer are you yeah. guys going to have um, one big celebration together somewhere uh for this i know you're doing a few things but is there going to be one night where you're all going to get together well we got to get together a couple times but but on the 28th it's going to be a, in toronto montreal is playing toronto it's an exhibition game on the 28th and there'll be a big reception from the Leafs there, and everybody will be there, I assume, uh, with their wives or girlfriend or whatever. And uh, there'll be another uh, get-together in, in Ottawa on the 21st and 22nd um, at the government level, and then the dinner at the, at the Governor's General on the 22nd. And, and after that, there'll be... There'll be There'll be very, there'll be a lot of gathering together, you know, because of that, the product that we'll have to promote uh, across Canada, maybe by, by group or four or five, I, I, I don't know yet. How about you guys? Are you a little bit, um, I guess, um, upset or dismayed that uh, the Russians can't be part of this? Were, were they going to be part of this at all? Or? They'll have their own because as soon as that war starts in Ukraine, uh, the, the Canadian government pull off of everything they were going to have. So it changed the whole thing. We were supposed to go, the plan was that we were supposed to go in Russia in the middle of September, and they were supposed to come here on the 28th. Oh, on that's the, too bad. Uh, uh, the, uh, for them, uh, 
So that's all canceled. Uh, even Tracek is a member of parliament of the Duma down there. And he signed, it was a unanimous vote. He signed for, for, for the war. Uh, he voted for the war. So he's barred. He cannot travel. Yeah. He, so those guys, so the, you know, like the Canadian government, the, the only thing they say <laughs> is the 50th anniversary of Team Canada. They, they don't mention the word Russia and, it's too bad, but that's the way it is. I would have loved to have something bigger and, and to be with those guys, the Arlamov, uh, uh, Yakuchev, and Trace Yaks, and all those guys that are, that are, that are still around, but uh, that's not the way it's going to be. All right, before I let you go, I want to ask you guys one more each. What was your biggest surprise that year? Your biggest surprise of that, you went in that series, you went to training camp, you played those eight games, you guys win. What was the biggest surprise to you, sir? Me. It, it, it's Paul Anderson scoring the last three winning goals. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Well, the odds, was, was <laughs> <laughs> the odds was probably one out of a million that happened, and uh, I'm, I'm glad that happened. Yeah, awesome. How about yourself, Ivan? Well, I, I think the memory is, uh, is, is winning. Um, I'm so proud we, we can come back and say, we did it, we did it. And the people, you know, <clears throat> when we walk on the street, you know, they, they, we, they act like we still play. You know, yeah. we, we, uh, they, they take us again. And the 3,000 people who came to Moscow, um, that was fantastic. And, uh, you know, it's 50 years later, I'm sure there is a quite a bit of people. They're not here anymore, but uh, we're very lucky. We, uh, we're here again. And I said to Paul, I said, at least we made it 50 years later. But uh, that's the, awesome. The memory is exceptional. That's awesome. And that's the second time you mentioned those 3,000 people coming. That must have been a great feeling to know you had Canadians in the crowd over there in Russia. Paul? That was, that was the six players on the ice. Yeah. Well, uh, my biggest surprise is, well, you know, Phil scored right off the bat. And then I scored at the six minute mark to make it two nothing. And we come back to the bench and I looked at Ronnie Ellis and Bobby Clark. And I said to them, and they both remember me saying it, boys, this is going to be a very long series. And I think every one of us on the bench knew that we were in trouble. I mean, they come up the ice. They didn't look what they saw, so they turned back. I played for Punch Imlek. If you ever went backwards, <laughs> yeah. it didn't even like a drop pass. And yeah. then, honest to goodness, I felt sorry for Dryden. Every time he thought they were going to shoot, they passed. And every time he thought they were going to pass, they shot. Like he, I, I thought he was just totally discombobulated. And it was because of their, the way they played. And so in the six-minute mark, I was, oh, my God. And then I looked down and we only had five dissents and back then, probably not going to end up well. <laughs> well, it did end up well. And, um, you know, just what that did for the game, the history of the game, uh, Russian, uh, the Soviets against the Canadians in 72, just an awesome um, series. And it's certainly awesome that you guys won. And me being an American, I mean, I know the impact it had. And um, I, I it, it's just awesome that you guys were part of that. And Paul, I'd certainly love to see you one day um, get into the Hall of Fame um, for sure. So you're able to experience that. You certainly deserve it in my eyes. So I want to thank you guys for coming on with me today. Been so, so much fun reliving those memories. And uh, we'll see you guys down the road. Thank you.